Okay, next topic. Let's flip that page. And let's take a look at IRAs and other retirement tax traps. <clears throat> if you get nothing else out of my conversation with you tonight, I really, really, really want you to pay attention to this topic because it's really important, okay? So here's the first question. How many people in the room have an IRA, 401k, 403b, 457, pension plan, profit sharing plan, whatever? Come on, let's see everybody's hands go up, okay? Pretty much everybody, okay? Wonderful. Of the people that just raised their hand, how many of you have a multi-generational IRA account? How would you know? Okay, we're going to talk about that. The question is, how do we do that? We're going to talk about it. There's only a few hands going up. Here's my problem. Why aren't all of you raising your hand about this situation? This has been the law since 2001 multi-generational tax treatment of IRA accounts. And if your account is not set up appropriately to get multi-generational treatment, the tax consequences can be horrendous. Now, I have people that meet with me five, six times a week, and they say, yeah, but I'm with like one of the large brokerage houses. By the way, I don't mention names, okay? Wouldn't they tell me about this? I mean, if this is the law, and if this gives me the best bang for my buck for my family, why would they not talk to me about it? And I'll tell you why. First of all, a lot of the companies don't necessarily want to take the responsibility of giving you this treatment because if you blow it, there are lots of tax penalties. And so they just as soon not deal with the issue. Okay, and if they don't offer multi-generational treatment and you guys have now been informed that no matter what else you may do after tonight, I want you to pick up the phone and call your advisors and ask them specifically, is my account a multi-generational account? It's a very simple question. You're going to get one of two answers. Now I'm assuming that they don't have it. These are the two answers you're going to get. Answer number one, of course your account's multi-generational. Of course it is. Question two, if that's their answer to you, show me the custodial agreement. Write it down. I'm a lawyer. I'm telling you what you need to ask for. Show me in my custodial agreement that I get multi-generational treatment on my IRA account. And that's where they run into trouble. I will tell you I've called lots of the largest brokerage houses and they keep bumping me up to the supervisor and the retirement specialist and the this specialist and they say things like, well we have lots of articles on our website, you can print the articles. You know, I want to print the articles. I want to see the custodial agreement, and I want you to show me where it says my account's multi-generational. They weren't able to do it. And I've had people sit in my office, and they were shocked. Now, I'm going to talk about how to do it and all that. Yes, ma'am? I'm going to show you in a second. I promise. It's very, very important. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. Honestly, see, look at I've accomplished my objective. You're sitting on the edge of your seat. I'm creating a cliffhanger. We love that. Okay. So, I want to be clear about what I'm talking about. This is not an account between a husband and a wife. If one of the spouses passes away, the surviving spouse can take the account over. That's called a spousal assumption. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about someone <clears throat> who is single, divorced, widowed, and when you die, your account is going to go to your beneficiary. Son, daughter, niece, nephew, friend, whatever the case may be. And we're looking for that person to get preferred tax treatment. And if the account is not multi-generational, 
That's not going to happen. And I'm going to show you the exact impact of not having a multi-generational account in a minute. Question, the second answer you're going to get when you ask your advisor, is my account multi-generational? What's that? Now, if your advisor says, what's that? You better be listening carefully. My nephew and I always say, you may not like the information you're getting, but you damn well better be paying attention to it, okay? Why would they not know this? So, what happens is, the reality is, if they know the account's not multi-generational, they're not going to talk about it. Because once you find that out, what are you going to do? You're going to move your account somewhere else that you can get multi-generational treatment because it's really important. What happens to their paycheck? It goes down. By the way, just so you know, I'm not here to upset everybody's relationship with their existing financial advisor. I'm here because I'm concerned about you. Your financial advisor is doing fine. They're not worrying about it, okay? I'm here to talk about how do I put you in a better position than you are right now. So let's talk about an account. I assume a 401k is not an IRA. It is not. Okay. It is not. It can become one, but a 401k is not an IRA, okay? All right, now, I'm going to assume for conversation purposes that we have a $250,000 IRA account. Folks, I work with a lot of people. Some of them have 10, 15,000. I just opened an account for someone this morning who put 5,000 into an IRA account. And I work with people that have two and three million dollars and everything in between. For purposes of demonstrating how this works, I'm gonna just assume an account of 250. It can be whatever, okay? If your account is not multi-generational, the 250 gets paid to your beneficiary. I'm gonna talk about my son, Josh. Okay, Josh is 40, 41 years old. He lives down in Florida. Josh loves to spend money. He's great, I love him to pieces. He's now a sort of retired Carnival Cruise director because he had a little baby girl a year and a half ago and he wanted to stay on land and be with his daughter. But if Josh has money in his pocket, Josh is gonna spend everything that he's got. Doesn't make him bad. He can buy another big screen. He's got five right now. I just don't want him to buy it with my money. It's okay as long as he's buying it with his money, okay? So let's say 250 gets distributed to Josh. It's not multi-generational. What happens? Josh takes the 250, adds it onto his tax return, and he pays the maximum tax rate. I know this is going down for 2018, but he's got some other income. So let's assume he's paying 40% tax on the 250. So the IRS becomes almost as big of a beneficiary as my son, Josh, because this is the tax, okay? And Josh ends up keeping 150,000 of the 250 that I just left him. How do we like that result? That's an IRA going to your beneficiary that's not multi-generational, okay, not so good. Now, anybody ever hear of a five-year payout? Five-year payout, okay, a few heads are bobbing, okay. Let's assume this company doesn't have multi-generational treatment, but they say, hey, guess what? We'll let you take it over five years. Okay, so what happens, 250, divided by five, so the company is gonna pay Josh $50,000 a year in an IRA distribution for the next five years. But Josh works, he still works for Carnival, he's a personal vacation planner, okay? Let's just assume Josh makes another 75,000 in wages and interest and whatever, and so now Josh has 125,000 in income each year for the next five years and his tax bracket's going to be higher than it would be if he just had 75. Everybody agree with that? Okay. So even taking the 50 out over the next five years is going to have some kind of an adverse tax impact on Josh because he's got to take a distribution of my IRA account. So again, this is an IRA account that's not multi-generational.